We just want to go over a couple of objectives. So after today's session, I hopefully, hopefully you'll learn the overall benefits of cancer and exercise, the importance of physical activity across the cancer continuum, some specific exercises for people who are having melanoma surgery, as well as general cancer exercise guidelines. Also some considerations for when you are exercising and living with a cancer diagnosis. I'm gonna talk a little bit about barriers to exercise and incorporating physical activity into your lifestyle. And lastly, just give you a bit of information about Wellsprings Cancer Education Exercise Program. So before I get started, I just want to talk to you, just the information I'm providing today is really of a general nature. I'm not going to be going into specific questions about exercise. It's really important that if you do want to exercise to have a discussion with your healthcare team, your physician, your nurse, your physical therapist, and they'll give you specific instructions on how to begin an exercise program or continue with an exercise program. All right, so as we get started, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about the benefits of exercise and physical activity with people living with cancer. With the advancements in different treatments for cancer, people are living a lot longer. So people are healthy for a lot longer after a diagnosis of cancer. And as I mentioned earlier, the body of evidence for the benefits of exercise is growing significantly. I think at one point, being diagnosed with cancer, there was a lot of focus on your treatment, resting, Fatigue was a huge issue, and it continues to be a huge issue, but exercise really wasn't being pushed the way it is now. So it's really important that we go over and understand the benefits of physical activity for individuals living with cancer. So some of the improvements you might see with exercise are physical, functional, and mental health improvements, improvements in your strength, your muscle mass, your flexibility, your balance, sleep and fatigue, and this is really important because fatigue is one of the most commonly reported symptoms of cancer in the treatments of cancer, and exercise can help significantly with sleep and fatigue. And a lot of people think, you know, if I exercise, I'm gonna be a lot more tired, or how can I exercise if I'm tired? Fatigue is really improved significantly with physical activity. A Couple of other improvements are sexual functioning, your body image, your self-esteem, and just your overall quality of life. Exercise also brings about some reductions. Um, so cancer reoccurrence, exercise can help. Uh, the rates of cancer-related mortality are decreased. Obviously body weight and fat mass can be decreased with exercise. And with hormone therapies, uh, some of the chemotherapies, weight gain is often quite common. Uh, bone loss is another reduction associated with exercise. I mentioned the cancer-related fatigue a little bit earlier. Pain can be reduced. Your resting heart rate, incontinence, depression, anxiety, stress, tension, emotional irritability. And this really is not a comprehensive list. I've just sort of put the main ones uh, that I thought would be helpful for this population today. This is really the cancer continuum, ranging from pre-diagnosis all the way to end-of-life care. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about each stage now, but the bottom line is Across the cancer continuum, there are benefits to exercise in every single stage. They may be different at each stage, but there are benefits in each stage. So in the first stage, the pre-diagnosis or the diagnosis stage, the primary role of physical activity is, is physical functioning, maintaining your strength, gaining strength. Uh, physical activity prior to a diagnosis of cancer can prevent certain types of cancer. We're talking more so about breast cancer, uh, colon cancer, kidney cancer. <clears throat> Being physically active prior to a diagnosis of cancer really is a protective factor. Moving on, uh, I want to talk a little bit about prehabilitation. Now, prehabilitation is a relatively new concept, and the thinking behind prehabilitation is that the the fitter you are prior to coming in for your treatments for cancer, particularly surgery, the better you'll do after surgery. So this graph here by uh, Dr. Carley, who is a physician in M Montreal at McGill, he's done a lot of research on prehabilitation. And essentially that top, top dotted line at the top uh, shows that as you come in for surgery for cancer, 
you're at a higher level than someone who maybe is not exercising. There's always a decline, a functional decline with surgery, but the decline is not as great as someone who doesn't exercise. And lastly, your recovery is better. So recovery times are a lot quicker. Your hospital stay can be a lot quicker. Um, just overall response from any type of treatment can be better with exercise. So that's just something to really keep in mind um, with exercise. And it certainly can have an impact on treatments from radiation and chemotherapy as well. Prehab is something that we're just starting here at Sunnybrook and Odette with um, our hepatobiliary patients. So it's something really, really quite new and we're hoping maybe to expand it to other areas of the cancer center as we uh, develop the program a little bit further, but it's something to think about. So moving on, exercise during treatment. Again, the primary goal at this stage is for physical functioning, improving your strength, improving your balance, or maintaining those, those uh, aspects as well. It helps reduce treatment side effects. And lastly, fatigue, um, which I talked about a little bit earlier, but the National Comprehensive Cancer Network recommends exercise and physical activity for the treatment of fatigue. <clears throat> early post-treatment, so this is really sort of right after your treatment is completed. All of those benefits we talked about earlier, those are still present, but it also helps with improving quality of life. So your physical health, your mental health, your social well-being, and your spirituality. And those side effects from treatment, that may be a little bit prolonged, they, they also are improved by exercise. Moving on to the next stage, long-term post-treatment. We're looking at this stage at reduced risk. Physical activity helps prevent certain types of secondary cancers. It helps prevent reoccurrences. It also helps protect against certain uh, comorbid comorbidities, things like cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, being overweight, obesity. So at this point in time, exercise is still very important. And lastly, end of life care. And a lot of people think that, you know, I'm at the end of my life, I don't have any strength or energy to exercise, but even gentle exercises like yoga or stretching or going for a, a stroll can be beneficial. Physically, it can help with that persistent of fatigue, the low energy, uh, the anorexia crickettia, and it also help, can help manage emotions at that point in time. Exercise is great for our physical and emotional health. So just moving on a little bit about melanoma and exercise, because um, that's what we're here today for. There's limited research at this point in time on exercise and melanoma specifically. Much of the literature on exercise and cancer is focused on breast cancer, gastrointestinal cancers, hemato hemological cancers, not necessarily on melanoma. There has been a lot of research on breast cancer, as I mentioned, and we like to extrapolate some of that data from the breast cancer research for our melanoma patients because that auxiliary node dissection that Dr. Wright was talking about earlier, that's also a, a surgery that breast cancer patients undergo. So we can take that information and use it towards our patients with melanoma. So just in general, if you do have lymph node involvement, there always is an increased risk of lymphedema. If you are someone who'd like to exercise and you do have lymph node involvement, we do recommend that you speak to a specialist working in lymphedema, whether it be a lymphedema nurse, a physician, a physiotherapist, to talk about whether or not a compression garment could be a benefit for you. With lymphedema, often what happens is fluid pools in your hands, your arms, your thighs, your knees, your legs, your ankles, that type of thing. And compression garments can be helpful, but we do recommend you speak to a therapist if you are interested in exercising about the use of a compression garment. I know Debbie is going to talk a little bit more about sun protection and sun care awareness later on, but if you do outdoor activity, we recommend trying to avoid exercise during the time of day when the sun is at its strongest. So between 10 a.m. and 4 a.m., try and avoid exercise outside uh, during those times. Get up early, after dinner type of thing is a lot better for you in terms of avoiding the sun. Um, Dr. Mike Evans talks about the slip, slop, slap, seek and slide um, protocol for sun protection. So slip on a hat, slop on your sunscreen, actually slip on your clothing, 
<laughs> Sorry. Slip on your clothing. I always get these confused and mixed up. Slip on some clothing. Um, and we're talking about clothing that protects your skin. So long sleeves, long pants. Slop on sunscreen, and we're talking about sunscreen usually generally with an SPF of greater than 30. Slap on a hat, seek shade, and slide on your sunglasses. And lastly, sunscreen for all seasons, not just summer and spring. Here at Sunnybrook, myself and the physiotherapist work with patients who are having groin dissections and the auxiliary node dissections, and we provide them with exercise programs um, for their recovery postoperatively. So we see all patients who stay overnight with a drain um, on generally postoperative day one and talk about the importance of exercise. So just really quickly, uh, in the first six weeks after surgery, so the auxiliary node dissection, some of the restrictions that we don't want you doing is lifting more than 10 pounds with that side or arm that you've had surgery on. We don't want you doing any kind of heavy lifting um, and that helps uh, incorporate activities of your day-to-day -day, uh, routines as well. No heavy pushing, no heavy pulling, so no moving furniture, was, which is probably something you're not going to be doing anyways right after surgery. But things like a rowing machine, you're going to be pulling on a rowing machine. We don't want you doing those type of exercises right after surgery as well. Repetitive movements right after surgery as well, swimming. The incisions are generally healing, so the risk of infection uh, is greater. So we don't want you swimming in a pool or in a lake right after surgery until everything is healed. As well as an elliptical machine when you're moving your arms back and forth. That's an example of a fairly repetitive activity. And right after surgery, we don't want you doing repetitive activities because there is uh, fluid in the incisional area. We don't want to increase those outputs from fluid. And lastly, avoiding using a treadmill for the first six weeks after surgery. Sometimes with treadmill use, patients, and I've done this myself, you sort of get distracted by what's going on around you and you, you might fall off. Your first instinct is good to grab the, the railing of the treadmill. So when things are still healing in terms of the surgical site, we don't want you using a treadmill just for that reason, okay? Um, just some quick exercise and activity recommendations. We want you to use your arm for functional activity. So things like washing your body, reaching into cupboards, um, those are all really good ways to incorporate exercise or activity into your regular routines. We provide an exercise program and it's initially it's just simple exercises like shoulder shrugs, shoulder rolls, um, shoulder blade squeezes and that's really to maintain uh, the flexibility, the range of motion of our chest and our arm. And once those drains are removed after generally about after a week or two, then we can move on to some more aggressive exercises. So walking is always a great exercise to do, um, and we provide specific exercise programs for patients after their auxiliary node dissections. So just moving on to groin dissections as well. In the first four weeks after surgery, we have some specific activity restrictions for the, the legs and the groin area. So um, Dr. Wright does recommend that patients keep their legs elevated uh, for 80% of the day right after surgery while the drains are in. So that's pretty much most of your day. Um, obviously avoiding repetitive movements such as cycling, swimming, or walking for an extended period of time. Walking is generally an activity that can be done at any point in time for uh, patients living with cancer apart from right after surgery. We don't want you doing that repetitive kind of movement right after surgery. Uh, in terms of just doing stairs in your home, a lot of people have stairs and that's certainly something we want you to continue when you go home. But as you're going up the stairs, you're going to want to lead with your good leg, the uh, leg that hasn't had surgery. As you're coming down the stairs, you're going to want to lead with the side that has had surgery. Okay? And the physiotherapist and myself will provide an exercise program. And it's really just to keep things, uh, keep the strength in your legs while you're uh, laying in bed for most of your day or on your couch for most of the day. We want to maintain the range of motion, the strength, and prevent the risk of DVTs or blood clots. Um, when, you're, when you're stationary for long periods of time after surgery, there is a risk of developing a blood clot. So these exercises that we would provide you will help keep things uh, strength and uh, avoid the risk of blood clots. So back in about 2010, the American College of Sports Medicine Roundtable on Exercise Guidelines for Cancer Survivors came out with some recommendations for people living with cancer. And what they recommended was that patients living with cancer uh, 
are encouraged to spend 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity exercise per week. So that might seem like a lot, but if you break it down, 150 minutes may be five days of exercise of 30 minute intervals. So not a huge amount, so going out for a 30 minute walk, not, not that much. Um, of those 150 minutes, they do recommend two to three days per week of muscle strengthening. So that would be weights, um, resistant type exercises. They also recommend having flexibility or stretching incorporated onto the days when you do cardiovascular exercise or when you're doing any kind of weight training. Okay, um, that 150 minutes is a guideline. Certainly 150 minutes may not be achievable for, for everyone here in the room today. The bottom line is to avoid inactivity. Okay, there's no cookie cutter recipe for what works for one person and another person. The bottom line is keep active. Do what you can to remain active during the day. If you can't achieve that 150 minutes every week, do what you can to avoid inactivity. And lastly, they do want to re recommend that physical activity is safe during and after cancer treatment. So that's really important for individuals living with cancer. Just some general considerations for exercise. As I mentioned earlier, it's important to speak to your physician before starting any type of exercise program. Uh, you wanna listen to your body. Um, in terms of exercise prescription, as I mentioned earlier, there's no cookie cutter program for everyone. Everybody's different. Everybody comes into exercise with a different level of physical activity prior to being diagnosed with cancer. So you need to do what works for you. Fatigue is really important. Um, if fatigue is an issue for you, think about incorporating exercise into the time of day when you have the most energy. Looking at doing shorter durations of exercise. So maybe you can't do 30 minutes. Break it down into 10 minute intervals. Doing exercises at lower intensities, um, looking at interval training, if balance is an issue, looking at sitting down to exercise. You wanna start slowly, progress gradually. And think about group exercise. Group exercise is really helpful in terms of for support um, and exercising with a buddy. It helps with motivation and accountability. And choose exercise that you will enjoy, okay? The exercise that you will do long term is the exercise that you will enjoy. Quickly, just some barriers to exercise. General barriers, time, motivation, money, knowledge, skills, support, that's for anyone. On the opposite side of the column is cancer-related uh, barriers. So pain, fatigue, shortness of breath, and the list goes on. Just a new concept that I really want to touch on quickly is lifestyle-based physical activity. It's incorporating planned or unplanned activities into your day that involve physical activity. So things like taking the stairs uh, rather than the elevator, parking your car at sort of the furthest corner of the shopping mall so that you can walk, um, walking all of the aisles of the grocery store where you're there instead of just going to the one aisle and then leaving. Incorporating every opportunity for physical activity into your day-to-day -day routine as possible. And this is a good place for people that are hesitant to start a traditional exercise program. So that's what I would really encourage people who are having difficulty with regular exercise programs. Lastly, just want to talk about uh, the Wellspring Cancer Exercise Program. It's a great program and I encourage all of you to look into it if you are interested. It's a supervised program. It's 30 weeks. Um, you meet one-on-one -on -one with a counselor and they provide you with an individualized training plan and it's monitored throughout those 30 weeks. Um, if you are interested, speak to your doctor. It does require a doctor's referral, but it really is a great program and I do encourage all of you to check it out. There's a Wellspring booth out front uh, in the lobby and there is someone who can speak to you about cancer and exercise from Wellspring. Just to finish off, some take-home messages. Any type of exercise is better than no exercise at all. It's never too late to start exercising. Exercise is beneficial across all stages of the cancer continuum. Choose activities that you will enjoy. Exercise with a friend. Trying to incorporate physical activity into your daily routine. And the best exercise is the one that you will do.